stand to your feet this morning. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash, I'm born again. Forever saved in the state. Say you are.
listen. Come on, let's say, created me. Created me a clean heart. Come on, let it be your prayer this morning and renew. And renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away.
say it. love. Can you just give him a clap right now? Praise. Oh. Woo. Jesus, we thank you for your love. That's so beautiful. It's never failing. Oh, 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 oh. 
Everybody say word. Come on, tell the Lord you deserve.
say it one more time. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, Lord. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. That's not like you. Nobody greater. stronger than you. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, God. No. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. One of the intercessors that come up right now. Come on, let's bring the intercessors up for a moment. Hallelujah. prayer for any reason why don't you come quickly if you're in need of prayer be someone to agree with you this morning there's nobody greater than our God there's nobody that can answer like our God nobody greater nobody praying that God will meet that need. We're praying that God will supply that one. That it would heal your body. That it would resurrect dead things on the inside of you. Dreams and hopes. Aspirations and ambitions. That God will do that very thing that you have need of. That the power of God and the presence of God that is in this room right now will be in your very home. There's nobody greater than our God. He's not just a prayer hearing God, but he's a prayer answering God. And it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God desired that you live the highest and best life that you can. That you spend your years in plenty. Nobody greater. Oh, no. Greater than you. Just put your hand on your screen. Put your hand on that monitor. Put your hand on that smartphone. As a point of contact, we agree now that God would move in a supernatural way. That God would move for you in an expeditious way. That he would come swiftly. That he would come clearly. And that he would come powerfully. May the power of God visit your life right now. May you experience God's presence in a way that you hadn't in some time. May he shift the things in your life that need to be shifted. May he open the doors that need to be opened. May you keep faithful. Maintain your faith until your change comes. We're praying for you. We're praying that God's highest and best would reach you. That the blessing of the Lord would invade your life. That the supernatural power of God will evict the enemy from your presence and that God will come swiftly, that he will come quickly, that deliverance might come to your house in the name of Jesus Christ. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater.
your neighbor and tell him, I didn't come to have church. I came to have a break, get a breakthrough. Come on. I came to get a breakthrough. Come on. Tell somebody, tell him, I came expecting something. I, came. I didn't come in here to look at the preacher. I didn't come out of here because somebody made me come. I came for a break. 
church because it's the right thing to do. They're in the church because that's where the fraternity or sorority brothers go. They're in the church for all different types of reasons. But if you're in this place today, I hope you came because you expect to meet God here today. You expect to meet an incredible God. Touch your neighbor, tell them, and an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Some of y'all miss that. Tell somebody to your left or your right. An incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know, there's something that's happening in the atmosphere this morning. There's a shift that's taking place in the room and I'm just gonna flow with the river. Y'all better quit, quit. Oh, 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 oh. 
Get messy in here today. Now just get ready. Get ready. Girl. But I hear the sound of breakthrough in the room. I hear the sound of some shifting. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. on that side. Jesus. Touch your neighbor and tell him, watch your toes now, watch your toes, because... Watch your toes. Somebody cut up in here today. So <laughs> you don't know you wasn't there. You don't know when and you don't know where. You don't know what the Lord has done for me. Have I got a witness? I said, you don't know, you wasn't there. You don't know when or you don't know where. You don't know what the Lord has done for me. Y'all quit now, because y'all get me Baptist in here this morning. Hey, Amen. Y'all sit down so we can... We can move forward. Hallelujah. Luke 
chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. All right. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Amen. God is good. That's the sound of breakthrough. That's the sound of breakthrough in the room. Y'all quit. Y'all quit. It's the sound of breakthrough in the room. Open your Bibles, if you will, to Luke chapter 5. We'll probably get back there in a little bit. Luke chapter 5. Let me let's wrap our minds around some instruction, some illumination, if you will. Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5. Those of you joining us live stream, if you're our first time guest, if you're with us for the first time, a little bit later on, we're going to celebrate you in a special way and acknowledge you and thank God for you being with us today. We'd like to make you feel special here and give you a token of our appreciation, something you can remember us by. Um, that'll last even longer, maybe than the, the experience that you have with us today. Hopefully it'll be life-changing. Amen. Well, um, I want you to I want you to I want you to put on your spiritual ears as I was sharing with the earlier service. Um, you've got to you've got to catch this message. This you know this this series that we're in now on breakthrough. It is not just instructional. It's inspirational. It's intended to be instructional in that you'll get some how-tos and some steps and all of those things. Um, we'll connect the dots through going through a series of scriptures here and there. But it's not just intended to be instructional. Um, it's also intended to be inspirational um, in that what you are instructed and what you are taught, uh, my desire is to inflate you. That's what inspiration is. It fattens us. It inflates us. It um, when we were sinking in, um, it's like an inspiration is like a flat tire meeting a, an air machine, if you understand. That's what inspiration is. It means I was running on flat until I got hooked up to something else that actually breathed life back into me. That's what inspiration is. All right. Well, and so the message, uh, these series of messages are intended to awaken something in you. But. The only way, and so they're instructional in some ways, uh, they're prophetic in other ways. And this message this morning, as it was last uh, week's message, and as was, you know, the two messages prior to that, are uh, very prophetic in nature. Those of you that don't understand that because you're com coming out of a more traditional setting or you're coming out of, um, you know, just coming off the street and getting born again, when I say prophetic now, I'm not talking about the oohs and the ahs and the spooky stuff that we very often associate with um, the prophetic or revelations or the horses and the books and, you know, all of those things. And uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, the, the Bible says that prophecy is good for edification, exhortation, and comfort. That is what New Testament prophecy is. Let me make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm clear on that. Uh, because sometimes uh, people prophesy doom and gloom. If you don't get yourself together, you're going to die in three days. Now, mind you, Old Testament prophecy sometimes came across like that. You remember when um, uh, the prophet went to Hezekiah? He said, Hezekiah, get your house in order because you're going to die. All right? Um, and so, you know, there was the Old Testament prophecy. Uh, but then when the Old Testament ended, there's a new dispensation. And uh, the, new dis the Old Testament was based upon the law. We had to do things to earn God's approval, and we were never able to earn his approval. Um, therefore, we had bullocks, they had, you know, uh, lambs, and they had all of these different types of sacrifices. And they would release that blood, and, and then that would be atonement. They had what they call a day of atonement. And that means that during that day, what that person, that priest went in once a year, um, and he would atone, sprinkle blood on the mercy seat, and would atone for the sins of all the people for the entire year. So you had to like wait a whole year to get your sins atoned for. You would carry sin all year 
And on that one day, that's when it would be taken away. Well, in the new covenant, we don't have that because we have a new pro uh, covenant based on better promises. And so now the new covenant is a covenant of grace. All right. And so now when prophecy is given, prophecy is given to encourage. Prophecy is given to exhort, to stimulate, inspire. And it is given to comfort. Now, so when somebody comes to you under this New Testament, uh, this New Testament uh, dispensation of grace, prophesying negativity to you, that ain't God. And you, are the, now that you're understanding this teaching, you should be able to pick it up very clearly. I don't care who it is, if it's me, you understand? And I'm calling and I'm saying, thus saith the Lord. Block, and I'm prophesying destruction over you. That is not New Testament prophecy. New Testament prophecy inspires, it edifies, build up, and it builds up, and it exhorts. Now, sometimes prophets can prophesy out of their own hearts because they're mad. Or they might know that somebody might have be operating in a certain lifestyle, and then they just tag on, thus saith the Lord. Quiet up in here now. So now, New Testament prophecy is for what? Edification. Somebody say edification. edification. Exhortation. Edification. And comfort. It's to comfort us. To make us recognize tomorrow will be better than today. So when somebody says, look at your neighbor and prophesy to him, that's not putting you in the office of a prophesy. I mean, of a, of a prophet. That's just saying, say something to them that will edify them, comfort them, and exhort them. Are we getting the proper understanding? Everybody in this room should be able to prophesy. You should be able to speak words of edification, words of comfort, and, and, and words of, uh, of, uh, of exhortation. Have everybody given that? That doesn't mean you have the gift of prophecy. That means you're able to prophesy. You're able to speak edification, to build somebody up. You're able to exhort them, to inspire and inflate them, and you're, order, and order, and you're able to comfort them. Are you following what I'm saying? Everybody got this? All right, so because I know sometimes when you go to a, a, a Pentecostal church as this is or charismatic church as this is and a word church as this is and you come out of a different setting and when you hear the word prophesy, your neighbor, I, I ain't doing that. I ain't a prophet. Paul said, I wish that you prophesied more than, uh, more than I do. You understand what I'm saying? So prophecy is just simply, uh, not, well, as you were, prophesying and prophecy are two different things. Prophecy is an inspired word that comes from the mouth of God. That's a rhema word into your future. You understand? Prophesying is simply S-Y. You got C-Y. That comes from the prophet. You got S-Y. That comes from all of us. You understand? To prophesy means to speak edification, exhortation, and comfort. Are you understanding now, I said all that to say that because I'm going to loosen you up in a minute and everybody in here is going to prophesy. You're going to be prophesying to your neighbor a whole bunch today. So I want to go ahead and, and break the spirit of religion on you. And sometimes the spirit of religion is just because of ignorance. We just don't know. We just haven't been taught. And all, all, we, all we know is, you know, what somebody told us and they weren't learned. All right? And so, you know, I study. You follow what I'm saying? Greek, Hebrew, context, all that stuff. Now, so once again, this message today is not simply designed to instruct you. It is to inspire you. Somebody say breakthrough. breakthrough. The Bible says, let he that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to his church. Jesus picked it up when he was talking about the parable of the sower. He says, with ears they hear not, with eyes they see not. So in other words, what he's saying is you can have natural eyesight and the natural ability to hear and still miss God because you have to hear and see out of a different place. I need you to follow me this morning. Just to grow up, this part here is real grown up. Now, grace, somebody say grace. grace. The Bible says this in, second, in 1 Corinthians, I has not seen. Ear has not heard. It goes on to say, neither has it entered into the heart of man the good things that God has prepared for them. Are you hearing me? And we hit the E flat and we huck and buck off of that. 
Because it is a, if, if you end right there, that is very good. But if, can, if you continue on, it gets gooder. <laughs> it says, I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the good things that God has prepared for him. So what happens is we get excited and we get inflated and inspired because we say, oh, God has good things prepared for me that I don't even have a clue about what it is. I'm so excited. And that's okay if you stop reading right there. But after that, it said, but he has revealed those things through his spirit. So you actually can see and you can hear. Everything that God has planned for you. If you travel to a place called the Spirit. In other words, if you get out of this natural realm and translate into a higher realm of actually that is more real than what you see. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that things that are seen were made of things that are not seen. How many of you have ever seen God? Ain't no hands raised in here. How many of you believe that God is real? So if you believe that God is real, but you have not seen God, actually what is not seen is more real than what you see. <laughs> Are you understanding me? Now, somebody say grace. I got I to gotta prepare this case because the, 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 what I'm going to share with you this morning is really not going to be too long. The preparation and the foundation to get you there is really what's going to be the most time-consuming thing. Somebody say breakthrough. Grace. 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 Somebody say the spirit. spirit. Scripture says in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1, if you see a brother or uh, overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourselves, lest you also be tempted. Somebody say spiritual. spiritual. It goes to 1 Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken, chapter 2, somewhere around the end of the chapter, or either verse, chapter 3 at the beginning of the chapter. It talks about the natural thing cannot understand the things of God, or the carnal man cannot, the natural man cannot understand the things of God because the things of God are spiritually discerned. You understand? So the natural man, you got three types of men. You got the natural man, you got the carnal man, you got the spiritual man. All of us are spiritual men that are born again. Are you understand what I'm saying? Now, eyes are not seen, ears are not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the good things that God has prepared for them. Uh, but he has revealed it through his what? Spirit. So you can see everything. You can see that plan if you stay in a place called the spirit. The Bible says, walk in the spirit. We shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Somebody say, I need to be spiritual. There's a difference between being a Christian and being spiritual. There's a difference between being religious and being spiritual. Are you following me? Spirituality has to do with your ability. Watch this. Spirituality has nothing to do with your ability to quote scriptures. Spirituality has everything to do with your ability to see in front of you. Spirituality has the ability to see beyond the natural. That's why it says in Galatians chapter 5, if you see a brother overtaken in a fall. In other words, you see a person down and out jacked up. It says, ye which are spiritual do what? Restore them. So in other words, the spiritual person sees that they're jacked up, but they see beyond that. They see restoration. My God. They see beyond the present condition. Yes. That's what meets the spiritual qualification. Spiritual qualification is not discerning now. Spiritual, uh, spiritual qualification is discerning later. I'm going someplace. I promise you I'm going someplace. Are y'all going to follow me? Touch your neighbor tell me you're going to have to grow up now to get this. You're going to have to grow up to get this. But what I'm going to teach on it is not in this realm today. It's in a different place. Watch this now. Somebody say spiritual. spiritual. Being spiritual will cost you some pain. Being religious won't. Being a Christian won't. Being spiritual will. All right, you know why? 
because you live and you access a different dimension. You access where things really happen. <laughs> you understand? Let me help you. You got Paul. Somebody say Paul. Paul. If you go over to Corinthians, we hear the scripture all the time, my grace is sufficient for you. That's a wonderful scripture. That means the grace that I give you will help you endure whatever you need to endure. But let me tell you why that grace was necessary. That grace was necessary because if you read at the beginning of that chapter, Paul said, I was such a man caught up in the spirit. And I went to places and saw things in the spiritual realm that I should never have seen that were unlawful for me to even mention. He said, and as a result of this high place that God had taken me to, a thorn in the flesh was given to me the messenger of Satan to buffet me so that I would not be exalted above measure because of the abundance of my spiritual revelations. So Paul is saying, the reason that I'm in trouble in my flesh right now is the place that I have the ability to access. And the reason that the messenger of Satan was sent to me, because guess why? Because Satan saw me in a place that he normally operates in. Are y'all hearing me? And so when Satan saw me access the place that he normally is revealing his plans and giving his orders, he said, what are you doing here? Because if you're in this place, you can intercept and oversee the orders that I'm getting and stop things from happening and go back into the earth and rearrange things. I, you better grow up in here this morning. Are you hearing me? And so whenever Paul was taken to that place and saw mysteries and saw things that were happening in the spirit that will ultimately happen in the earth, Satan said, oh, no, I can't have too much of this because if he, if he can do it, watch this, he can teach somebody else to travel here. And if he can teach somebody else to travel here, then he can, they can teach somebody else to travel here. And before you know it, I got people that live in the earth traveling in a dimension that they don't live in. Then they understand at that moment that they are not subdued by time, but they use time to their advantage because they've been in a place that they're waiting for time to catch up to. Are y'all hearing this? This is for grown Christians now. Some of this is to some of y'all, it's like a xylophone playing at, a, at, a, at, a, at an orchestra. It's just strange, but you'll get it tomorrow. Now, so when you're spiritual, you can go way ahead into a realm. That's what breakthrough is. It's when God breaks us into a different spiritual realm that you can see and live out of and experience. Watch this. And then come on back to earth. Then what happens is this. Watch this now. When you go to that place in the spirit that is ahead of your now, that helps you come back having the faith to endure your now. <laughs> then you can go to the store and buy you a pack of now. <laughs> and later, because, and, and, and then your now becomes tasty to you. Are you understand? Your now, no matter what it is, becomes tasty to you because you've had a taste of now and later. Are you hearing me? I promise you I'm going somewhere. Are y'all getting this? I'm trying to take the profound and wrap it in a package as simple as I can. Now and later, you can occupy them both. You see this? You can have now and later. Now, if you go to later and understand how to navigate it, you understand me? There was Philip. Philip was translated. Philip was in his now. God showed him future. Before you know it, Philip was in a totally different part of the earth. Enoch walked with God in the now, and the Bible said he was no more. Translated. Jesus, the Bible says that he was over by the ocean. Before you know it, he was walking with the men on the Emmaus road. He understood now. And later, how you can possess them both in your now. Are you understand? You can see your future in that place. You can see what God, not watch this, has already done. Touch your neighbor, tell them God ain't about to do nothing. It's already done. What happens is 
you got to get into that spiritual place and see it. And that helps you endure your now. Are you understanding? It's already done. What happens is in eternity, there is no time. It's just forever. Okay, when is eternity going to start? Just always was. When is eternity going to end? Just always is. Watch this. God made time and put us in it. So time is always trying to catch up to eternity. Time, what is, is always trying to catch up to what has been. That's why in Ecclesiastes, the wisest man on the earth said, what is, has already been. Are you hearing me? Touch the neighbor and tell him, I've been here before. I just didn't know it. I've been here before. I just didn't know it. I know that's spooky for some of y'all. Are you following me? Now, what does that have to do with today's message? In order for you to receive that, you've got to understand that your pastor has already gone to a place in the spirit, grabbed something out of that place, brought it back here today to deposit in your now. And I want to show you scripturally that is possible. That's the place as your pastor I must live. Are you following what I'm saying? That's where I must live. You understand that? I must live in the spirit. That's why I can't always take phone calls. Because guess where I am? A different place. I go there so that I'll be able to speak a word into you now. <laughs> Are y'all understanding this? And so if I'm caught up answering you now, I can never access you later. So the question becomes, do you want me to tell you what to do now or do you want me to prepare you for your later? Depends on what's up to you. Now, Luke chapter 5. That was just preparation. Luke chapter 5. We have read this message passage several times. I'm just going to pull out a couple different things out of this. This Word is prophetic. I struggled for almost 20, it's so prophetic and so, so, it's so now and later that I struggled for over 24 hours on just what to name it. I couldn't figure out what to name it, what to title this message. And when you hear what the title of it is, it, something on the inside of you ought to leak. When you hear just what the title of it is, it's, you might want to bust a wall and, and, and be on Dave Lyle and leave some dust in a hole here. Luke chapter 5, real quick. Luke chapter 5, New King James Version. Now, I told you now, I went into the spirit. Grab something. Caught it. You understand? I caught it. I came back here to deposit it into your spirit. So you can endure your now while you're waiting on your later. You understand that? Ask your neighbor, what kind of you like, grape or strawberry or apple? I like apple. I like apple. Watch this. Luke 5. Foundation's out of the way. This is going to be pretty quick, though. I promise you. When he has stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. Somebody say breakthrough. breakthrough. So they signaled to their partners 
in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the boat so that they began to sink. Read that again. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, they're on the, sea, they're on the, they're on the side of the, um, uh, the bank of the river, or the lake, as it were, uh, teaching a multitude of people. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word or your insistence, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and the net was breaking, so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. Verse number 9 says, For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Now, I want to use for a thought today, title today, and I want you to get ready for this. O-M-G. <laughs> Touch a neighbor to your right of you and tell them, neighbor, you about to enter into a oh my God moment. Touch your other neighbor on the other side. Say, you're entering into a oh my God. I'm talking about where the breakthrough and the abundance and the increase it's going to happen so suddenly. It's going to happen in such an enormous way. You won't be able to articulate it. You won't be able to find the words. Touch somebody and tell them the preacher's been in the spirit and caught something from God. And we are about to access. And oh my God, I can't articulate it. There's no words to describe it. Something I haven't even prepared for sufficiently. But it's going to happen. Touch a neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, oh my God. Y'all sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Let me build this case. Somebody say, oh my God. God showed me some things recently that were straight up scary. In a good way. I'm talking about scary in terms of amazement. Wait a minute. You're going to do that? Hold up. You're going to, wait a minute. Now or later, I got it. All right, don't focus on my now. Focus on what I've shown you because you endeavored to see something different. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, here it is. Peter is a fisherman. Jesus is a carpenter. No carpenter generally has the expertise to tell somebody that's been fishing all of their lives how to fish. Show me how to put up drywall, Jesus. Show me how to lay carpet, Jesus. Leave the fishing to me. It's not your boat, Jesus. In fact, it's my boat that you happen to be sitting in preaching through. So in other words, I allowed you to preach through my occupation. So therefore, oh, some of y'all missed that. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and tell them, tell them, don't leave Jesus at home when you go to work now. Don't, don't, leave, don't leave Jesus at home when you go. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because if Jesus can preach through your occupation, if Jesus can, if you can, you can use your occupation to let Jesus get a word to somebody, then that's going to qualify you for a, a spiritual, that's going to qualify you for the overflow, for the abundance. If you will use your job, if you will use your business, whatever opportunity, whatever ship you're in, if you get that fella on your ship, then you will position yourself for a breakthrough. Okay. So Peter allowed Jesus to preach through his occupation. Didn't hold back. Yeah, yeah, you can use it. So watch this now. So then Jesus tells Peter, the carpenter, tells the fisherman, the carpenter that doesn't own a boat, tells the fisherman, watch this, launch out into the deep 
and let down your nets. Did y'all see that in your scripture? Put that scripture up there, if you will. Put that up there very quickly. He said, and launch out. That was it. He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, that nets there actually shouldn't have a apostrophe. Now, watch this. It's plural. So, in other words, he's telling you, Peter, let down all of the nets that you have. Next verse. But Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down. Wait a minute. Mm -mm. Wait a minute. Perspectives are different. The carpenter can't fish, and the fisherman can't nail. But the carpenter has more faith than the fisherman about what the fisherman does. Because the carpenter is telling the fisherman, let down nets. And the fisherman is caught up on how he normally does it and frustrated by what he didn't catch last night. He's been working hard and didn't see it any return on it. And so now the word is sitting in his ship. Some of y'all missed that. Jesus was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So you got the word sitting in your boat. And the word is telling you, put down more nets. And you tell them, okay, well, I'll put down a net. I'll put down one of them because I don't want to go through the trouble. Some of y'all missed that. See, because those nets during that time were heavy. Those nets during that time were like ropes. And what occurred was they would get very salty because they were fishing in, 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 in plumbers that were very salty. And those nets would get very salty. And the more salty and the calcium buildup that they had, they were very heavy. And Peter did not want to go through the trouble of grabbing all these nets and putting them on the side. Why? Because he had a man telling him to put down the nets that had never been fishing with him. Some of y'all missed that. Now, had it been another fisherman that has 17 fishes and, I mean, barges and boats and would have told Peter, hey, you know what? Hey, Peter, put down all your nets. He would have said yes. You know why? He would have thought that person was so experienced that they had been at that part of the ocean before and they knew where the fish were. But no, what he said was Jesus, in other words, the word don't know what it's talking about because he doesn't understand. The word doesn't understand what I just experienced last night. Some of y'all missed that. The word doesn't understand. Jesus doesn't understand. I was frustrated last night. Where were you then, Jesus? When I oh, some of y'all missed that. When I was trying to catch these fish, where were you then, Jesus, sitting in my boat, telling me how to fish and telling me where to drop my nut, my nets? When I was out here last night working hard, didn't catch a thing, couldn't get a minnow, couldn't get a bass, couldn't even get one trout in my boat. And now you coming up here, Jesus, on the scene the next day. I fished out here all night. Notice that he said I fished all night. Here it is, Jesus. I fished all night and work now you got me working for you all day y'all ain't saying nothing because you're using my boat I can't get no sleep because you're preaching in the middle of my boat all these people on out all these people on the bank listening to you saying amen running and dancing and the organ is playing and here I am frustrated I'm tired y'all ain't saying nothing because I work all night I ain't called Jack in other words I got more month than I got money and you tell And you're telling me to long shot into the deep? Guess what? That's where I just came from. Some of y'all missed that. Now, here's the thing. We always thought in reading that scripture when he said launch out into the deep that he was actually telling uh, Peter to go to a place that he'd never been before. No. He was actually telling Peter, go right back to the same place you didn't catch nothing last night. Touch your neighbor, tell them God's going to do it this time. It's going to happen for you this time. The same thing that you needed the last time but did not get. Somebody shout, oh my God. 
No, God is telling Jesus, tell him, no, I don't want you to try anything different. I don't want you to go to another place because then guess what? You will say, you know what? I went over here to a different part of the lake and I caught all these fish. No, Jesus said, I want you to go right back to the same place you experienced all that frustration, to the same place you rode your way out and had no success. I want you to go to the very place that you didn't think was fruitful. I want you to go to the very place you didn't think you can get increased from. I want you to go to the very place you thought everything was dried up. I want you to go back to the same place and you're going to see when I'm in the boat with you. See, last time, last night you went with your boys. You went with your partner. You went with your other crew. But when you go back this time, I'm in the boat with you. Touch your neighbor, tell him I got that fella on my ship. I got that fella on my ship. When you're in fellowship with Jesus, when he's riding your boat, preaching through your occupation, whenever you get to the place that God says the abundance is, he's going to release it. Somebody shout, oh my God, oh my God. Are y'all seeing this now? Y'all seeing why Peter is so frustrated? Now, can I get to your prophecy? I'm going to prophesy to you right now. This is what happened next. You better catch this. He said, let down your net for a great catch. Are you hearing this? In other words, the fish are here, but you got to catch it. The word, watch this, what you need has already been released through my word. But you got to catch it. The net is symbolic of your spirit. And that's where you catch prophecy, not in your head. See, because your thoughts are in your head. And your thoughts will sometimes agree with what you see. So prophecy, you can't catch in your head. You got to catch it in your inner man. Because in your head is where you have to battle thoughts. In your inner man, you don't have to battle prophecy. Because if you renew your inner man day by day, eventually it will overcome your thoughts. And you'll bring those thoughts into captivity. Are you understanding? Now, can I get you ready for the next thing? This breakthrough right here. In fact, somebody might run. I, better, I think I might need to stay on the stage. I have some nice shoes and I don't want to jack them. They tight too. European shoes. Watch this. Touch your neighbor, tell the neighbor. This breakthrough right here. Well, if you cross the counter line, say right here. It's going to be so big, you won't be able to handle it. When Peter, when, 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 when Peter got that breakthrough, when his net started breaking, you know what he said? Oh, my God, hey, boys, come over here and help me. I can't handle what God, I got so much, I can't even handle what God, I was praying for this. I was believing for this. I've been working hard for this. And now the thing that I've been believing for has shown up and I wasn't even able to handle it. Come over here and help me. This breakthrough that you're on the brink of, that in time you're catching up to, is so big. Girl, let me get. Your college degree has not prepared you for this. Your intellect has not prepared you for this. Your occupation and skill level training and all that development has not prepared you for this. This breakthrough that you are going to experience is a breakthrough of mammoth proportion. It's a breakthrough of enormous proportion. Touch your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, this thing that is going to happen for you, you won't be able to handle it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I don't care how much you prepare, it just won't be enough. You got to understand when the kingdom, when you got a kingdom mindset, you just don't have one bank account. When you got a kingdom mindset, you got a bank account that says now, and you got two or three more to say later. In other words, my bank account got different flavors of my now and later. I got a now bank account, and I got what I want to taste later. And then I got me a great bank account, and I got me a strawberry bank account, and I got me a raspberry bank account. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, because that means you call it in the spirit. 
And when you cast that thing in the spirit, you're just living in your now, believing for your future, waiting for time and your destiny to come together. And guess who was in the boat? The truth was in the boat. And Jack Nicholson said it better. You can't handle the truth. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. You won't be able to handle this very thing that God has done. Get your nets together. Get your boat together. Get your crew nearby. Because when God breaks it open, when God expands your territory, when God enlarges your border, it's going to be so much, you won't be able to handle it. Can I tell you the next thing? I told you the foundation was a long part, but this prophecy is a short part. Touch a neighbor and tell them you ain't going to be able to handle this. Somebody say, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. It's going to be so much, you're going to have to say, help! Touch your neighbor and tell them, don't look at you now. Don't look at you now. Don't get caught up in you now. Don't get caught up in you now. When you leave here today, you ought to go to the corner store and get you packs of now and later. Put one on your job. Put one in your car. Put one on your nightstand. Take one to your mirror. Put them in the refrigerator. Put it under your chair. Put it in your Bible. Wherever you need it. Wherever you need your faith for. Now and later, you need to get something that's going to remind you of this word. Because the enemy's going to come as soon as you leave and tell you to focus on what you see. Somebody say, but now or later. Oh, my God. Now, I'll leave about five more minutes, I promise. Now, touch your neighbor and tell you, you ain't going to be able to handle it. Can I tell you the next thing? The Bible says that the net broke. And he had to call his partner and say, y'all come over here. In other words, tell your neighbor, you ain't going to be able to hoard it either. You won't be able to hoard it either. No, no, no. It's going to be so much, you ain't going to be able to hoard it. See, some of you in here are hoarders. I'll go to your house right now. You got stuff in there that you don't need. That you, yeah, no, 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 no. You got stuff in there that you don't need. You're just trying to keep thinking, I don't know if I ever get another one. I don't know if I ever get a dress. It's too small, but I'm going to get back into it. Touch your neighbor and tell them, just stop fooling yourself. Just go ahead and sew it. And if you get back into it, just buy you another one. Y'all ain't saying that. Because guess what? You ain't going to be able to handle it. Y'all, uh, Go ahead and give it away. Go ahead and store it to somebody. Because this breakthrough, you're not going to be able to hoard it. It's just like the manna. Touch your neighbor, tell them, neighbor. It's just like the manna in the wilderness. God rained down manna from heaven. They went outside one morning. And they said, what is this on the ground? And somebody said, manna. It literally means, what is it in the Hebrew? And the manna came by day. And only once a day. And whenever they tried to store it, they tried to hoard it. Then the manna turned into worms. And I'm telling you right now that God wants you to be a distribution center. God wants you to be a distribution center. God is setting you up to be a conduit that the blessing and power of God and life can flow through. Don't keep what God does. Get ready to sow. Tell somebody, get ready to sow. That thing is going to come in abundance. And if you ain't prepared, the very blessing can cause you to sink. And then the next thing is... The Bible says at the end, whenever he called the fish, he invited his boy and said, I can't handle it. And then he couldn't hoard it. The Bible said all that were with him and those that were on the bank, they were astonished. Why? Because he could not hide it. Touch a neighbor, tell them, neighbor, the breakthrough that's coming, you won't be able to handle it. You won't be able to hoard it. And you won't be able to hide it. Get ready for your haters. Because you're going to have haters. This type of breakthrough is going to bring out of the cellar. It's going to bring out of the woodwork. It's going to bring out of the pit. Every demon, every hater that's been on assignment to ruin your faith. You won't be able to hide this thing that God is doing. It's not about being a showboat. It's not it's a showboat. It's that God's in the boat. And when Jesus is on your boat, you don't have to be a showboat. Touch your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, you can't hide it. Go on the ride with it. Go on the run with it. You ain't got the flown it. It's going to be undeniable. And there are going to be people that saw you come in from the night before. You came in with nothing. But when Jesus, that fella, was in your ship and you had fellowship 
with the Son of God, with the Word of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They gonna see your ship come in. Touch your neighbor, tell a neighbor, my ship coming in. My ship coming in. It is coming in loaded. It's coming in slow. It's coming in way down. My ship's coming in. Is there anybody in here that recognize the day? I cast that prophecy. I cast that word. My ship is coming in. And everybody on the banks waiting for me to come back this time the way I came back last time. I came back frustrated. I came back angry. I came back mad. I came back upset. I came back discombobulated. I came back depressed. But this time, my ship is coming in with a full load. My ship is coming in with the greatest catch of my life. My ship is coming in with more increase that I've ever had. Supernatural, super abundant, overflow is visiting my house, my family, my spirit, my vision. Oh my God, you did it again. But this time you did it in a bigger way. Oh my God, you did it again. But this time you did it in a crazy way. Oh my God, you blew my mind. Oh my God, you upset some folk. Oh my God, my family couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't handle it. I won't hurt it. I can't hide it. See ya! go you've been fishing you've been working you've been toiling all night hadn't seen increase hadn't seen a way made you've been frustrated more month than money but i prophesy that day is over your ship is coming in don't get jealous about my ship don't get jealous about your neighbor's ship because when the ships come in and the tide rolls in. All the boats in the harbor race. I prophesy this lake, this harbor, this river, this ocean, this body of water, all the ships are coming in. And I'm glad we got the right fella on our ship. We've got the word of God in our ship. Anybody, are you ready? For an OMG moment. Anybody ready to wake up tomorrow morning? Look in the mailbox. Oh my God. Get ready tomorrow morning to go to human resources. Oh my God. Get ready tomorrow to get home and your husband chain on his knees praying, pouring out the liquor, throwing out the ashtray. Oh my God. Anybody in here today ready for an oh my God I believe you're experiencing oh my God. Hey. Somebody say, oh my God, oh my God. I feel that thing, I caught it. I caught it, I caught it, I caught it. I received it, I received it, I received it.
Tell somebody, tell them I'm gonna beat you to the store. I'm gonna beat you to the store and get my nine laters. That's gonna hold me until my ship comes in. That's gonna hold me. And every time I leave work frustrated, I got me a pack in my glove compartment. Got me a pack in my console in case they melt. Got some under the seat where it doesn't get too hot. A pack in the trunk in case it stays cool in there. Y'all really catch that? The thing that I loved about it, Dennis, Jesus did the miracle in the same season that Peter was experiencing his greatest frustration. And that's why some of you have been so upset and angry, ready to quit your job and ready to do that. God said, go back. When I'm with you, I can get it out of that place. I can, that place is trying to hold it back. I can make it, give it up. Peter, don't you know even the seas obey me? Somebody say, oh my God. The next time you're crying for help, it won't be because <laughs> you need to get somebody to give you something. <laughs> when Peter cried for help, because <laughs> he has so much, I need help giving it away. <laughs> I've been here, y'all ready for that type of place. I don't need you to help me pay the bill. I need for you to help me store my increase. <laughs> help me manage my overflow. I don't need help because I'm underdue. I need help because of my overflow. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and tell them that's your next season. That's your next season. Prophesy to two or three people now. I told y'all I was going to help you prophesy to some folks. Go prophesy to two or three people and tell them that's your next season. That's your, that's your next net breaking. That's your next boat way down. That's your next account overflowing. That's your next house that you want. That's your next rental property. That's your next cars that you can loan. That's your next business that you can start. That's your next a husband that's good. That's your next child out of jail. That's your next scholarship granted. That's your next body healed. That's your next ministry started. That's your next elevation. That's your next promotion. Prophesy to somebody. Exhort, comfort, edify. Your next season is a season of tremendous breakthrough. Tremendous for you and traumatic for the devil. Somebody shout, I'm next! Y'all catch that thing? Oh my God. I promise you, I've been to that place. I've seen it. I went to that place and said, God, I ain't ready. He said, you ain't going to ever be ready enough to handle this. It's going to be a sovereign move of God. You were here today. You want to experience the fullness of that? It begins by getting into the kingdom. Scripture says it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You got to be a citizen of it to enjoy the benefits of it. Everybody resting on your feet, if you will. Rest on your feet. Everybody resting on your feet. Thank you. Let's honor this moment here. Somebody might want to come to Jesus. They said, that's my next step. I want to come to Jesus. I want
want to come to Jesus. Perhaps that's you in here today. Say, you know what? This is my come to Jesus moment. This is my come to Jesus moment. I want to be saved. I want to be secure. I want to be established and rooted and grounded in him. I don't want to live another day outside of his will and being absolutely certain that my soul is saved. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm talking about being born into the kingdom. If that's you and you say that's me, I'm desperate for in the day. I want my life changed. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. If that's you, wave your hand and say, that's me, and I'm not ashamed of it. I want to be saved. I see a hand in the back. I see another hand over here. Is there somebody else that says, I want to be saved? I want to be saved. Those of you that wave your hand and say, I want to be saved, slip out of your seat right now. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come real quick. We're going to pray with you. I'm not going to ask you to do anything strange. Come quickly. You wave your hand and say, I want to be saved. Come quickly. Here's one. That's a great decision that you're making, daughter. There were two or three other hands. Now, I ain't going to wait for you long. I'm going to tell you that right now. You might have eternity, but I'm still in time. Give you a couple minutes. The law going to wait on you, but I'm not. There you go, darling. Somebody else said, I want to be saved. I want to be going born again. You on the back row somewhere in the bank. You got about 10 seconds to get down here. Come on quickly. Come quickly. Somebody else has said, I want to commit to Jesus today. You online, you can get saved right there in your truck. You can get saved in your cubicle. You can pray this prayer with me that we're about to pray. Is there anybody else? Hallelujah. Because hell is too hot. Life is too short. Play games with your eternal soul. It's where you come. All right. Slip your hands in the air, daughter. Now, after you guys pray this prayer with me, you're going to be born into the kingdom, okay? All right? Your spirit man's going to change, but your thoughts are not going to change immediately. All right? But you're going to have start having kingdom thoughts and heavenly thoughts. Your spirit man's going to want to do right. It's going to make you feel strange when you think something or do something, say something. It's not characteristic of your new nature. You understand that? All right, now lift your hands up as an act of your surrender will. Amen. That's it, daughter. The Lord is moving on your spirit right now, and it's good, too. This daughter up here is just crying right now, and God's just all on her. All on her. Jesus' name. It's okay. Some of us don't understand how it is to be gone and to come back home. And some of you in here today, you're in a backslidden condition. You need to come back home. Come back home. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Nothing to be ashamed of, to be embarrassed of. You got help. You got support here. You got people that, 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 that want to walk with you, help you walk through your deliverance. Come on. Pray this prayer with me. Come on down here, daughter. You need to recommit your life to Jesus. Come on down. I need to get back in right fellowship. I need to get back on that ship with that fella. I need to be in fellowship with him again. Pray this prayer with me. Hallelujah. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all make mistakes. We all fall sometimes. But just because you fall, falling doesn't mean that you fail. You never a failure in God. You only a failure if you never acknowledge it and confess your sin. Because he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And the cleanse, I don't care if you're struggling with same-sex attraction. That's no different from struggling with gossip. That means we just need to repent. Say, God, help me. Help me. Alcoholism, it makes no difference. Pray this prayer with me. Say, dear God, hold those hands up as an act of your surrender and your will. Say, dear God, I'm sorry for the mess I've made, for the sin in my life. But today, I make a decision to trust you with my life and to do it your way. I believe in my heart. Jesus was raised from the dead. Establish me now. Root me now. Cleanse me now from my sin. You're my Lord and my Savior. I'm yours and you're mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome back if you've been away. And welcome into if you've been astray. In Jesus' name, God bless you, daughter.
this is customary for us. What, those of you that came up here today, we want to make sure that you get the right start and you get the right reboot. All right, we want you to press reset and press the right button. We've got a young man and a young lady over here that'll take you to another room that's just for you. Then I got it, not gonna ask you to do anything strange. They're gonna put something in your hand, pray with you about whatever needs you might have or whatever struggle you might have in a more private and intimate setting. So just grab your things and follow this young lady and this young man right here, amen. Come on, let's put our hands together, let's celebrate. These folk here again today. Well, come on, let's thank God because it's kingdom investment time. Come on, let's receive the Lord's offering today. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. Watch that door. Watch that door. And let's honor the presence of God. Thank you. Know the young men are being in position. Amen. Get the best seed that you can in your hand. Get the very best seed that you can in your hand. Get the very best seed that you can in your hand. And once you're ready to give and you're ready to offer, why don't you stand up and rest on your feet? That's signification that you're ready to sow into the Lord today. The Bible says it's more blessed to do what? Give than it is to receive. Don't get quiet now. You don't get quiet when it's offering time. You start celebrating because you know that he gives seed to the sower. Amen. All right, don't y'all get religious on me in this house. Y'all know how that is. Amen. We celebrate when it's time to give because we have freely received. Therefore, thank you. Therefore, we freely give. We freely give. So get that offering together. When you're ready, uh, rest on your feet. If you're giving online or you gave online already this week, just grab your um offering envelope. Play right on it what you gave and just write online. Amen. delight to give, amen, because we're cheerful and prompt to do it, givers, amen. Everyone resting on your feet. If you're not even giving, rest on your feet to follow this flow of traffic as to not impede those that are giving this morning. Everybody resting on your feet unless you're, unless you're physically unable. Thank you. Lord, we willingly, faithfully, and cheerfully worship you with our giving. Come on, list those tithes and offering up in the air. Through tithes and offering, we release our faith and finances so that all our ministry facilities will be built and our vision will be established in the earth. We believe that as we sow seed to establish the vision of your house, you will also establish ours. Therefore, as a result of our obedience and love and giving, we thank you for raises and increases, borrowed money to be returned to us, bonuses and increased commissions, rebates, dividends, gifts, and inheritances, cancel debt, and surprise checks in the mail. We bless you for blessing the health of our bodies, the sanity of our minds, and the quality of our relationships. We honor you for the divine favor that you bring to our lives. In Jesus' name, somebody shout, oh my God. From the rear, face your right. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I forgot something. No, we got some first-time guests in here. Keep on playing. First-time guests, first-time guests. We have a celebration that is awaiting you. Let me see your hand. If you're a first-time guest with us this morning, awesome, so glad to have you with us today. If you're participating in the offering, there'll be some young men that are in this way. If you don't mind, we have a reception that we prepared just for you. My wife and I and some of our leadership staff would love to come back. Thank you for coming. There's some food that is prepared for you, refreshments, and we have a special gift that we'd like for you to take with you as you come. So if you don't mind, just slide out of your aisle, whichever aisle is closer to you. Follow uh, the direct the aisle to your left. And then there are ladies back there with their hands raised. They're going to take you to a special area that has been set aside just for you. And we're going to celebrate you, love on you, and just show you how grateful and thankful we are for your coming. Come on, let's celebrate our first time guests again, if you will. Hallelujah. Glad to have you guys join us today. Amen. Well, come on from the real. Let's go ahead and receive the Lord's tithe and offering. And let's celebrate as we do. Come on, let's celebrate. Put your hands together. Come on. Come on. Ready? Here we go. Oh, 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 oh,
of you this morning that are giving online, thank you so much for your charitable contribution, for your support of this ministry. We could not do what we do here. We could not do what we do in the earth without your generosity and without your support. Thank you, number one, for tuning in today, you know, experiencing what we experience here. We pray that the word of God enriched your life, that you will experience this week an oh my God moment. Right now, you can look at the tab on your on the website. You can click give online. We'll pray over your offering as we receive it, as if you were here with us today. Thank you so much for your generosity, your faithful support, your continued support of our ministry through viewing our broadcast. We love you, we're praying for you, and we'll see you Wednesday night. of the earth now rejoice all the people of God sing yeah, yeah. this everything that has for us shall for joy cause everything that is beautiful belongs to you and all the earth it is the Lord everything is yours everything is yours you are excellent
image. I'm a favorite child of God. I'm the apple of God's eye. I am uniquely esteemed. And I have undue preference in my life. I'm a king's kid with a royal status, which affords me preferential treatment. My life is crowned with glory and honor. Goodness and mercy follow me in every area of my life. I walk in favor daily. I declare favor in every area of my life. My family, my job, my neighbors, in the marketplace, with the government, with the media, and the places that I travel. I decree it, and so it is established. My God and the blood of Jesus, shout, oh my God!